Hi there, thank you so much for joining me on my little outdoor tour of March. It's the end of March, and I'm very happy that it's the end of March because we are going to be relocating orchids according to their summer status. So exciting. So the telumni, as you see over there, will soon be hanging back on the wall, right back there where the Lusneri is dangling happily away. And look at this. Blooming Alley is in full spring swing. We'll get to that just now. Let me walk you around to the west side for one last time until it is time to remove everything and bring it back to where it was. This is my orchid post-it station. As in, instead of putting a post-it in which orchid is next, I put the orchid in question that has to be addressed on my staging area so that I don't forget because there's a lot of orchids in line to be addressed. And this is my dubious Frances Fox. So she's there as a reminder. Cousin, it is chilling out down in the shade at the moment. To the left there is Garen Weaver, looking very bad because I think the winter was not kind to it and neither was I. So Garen Weaver on the left, Cousin It here down on the rack because I want to test whether King, my puppy, is going to leave my plants alone. Not fair to use Cousin It for that. But the idea is if he's going for a plant, then I can make sure that it is something that is vigorous and will grow back and that I need to address anyways, as opposed to my ungracums, which will go into this little corner here and then have him chewing on my agracum leaves. So cousin it for the time being is the test candidate. And so far, no issues. So I'm really pleased about that. I'm very grateful cousin it is putting up with it and being so kind as to be my guinea pig. Much appreciated. Here's my Lusneri with the funky spikes. Hasn't been fertilized. This is the test for this season to see what happens. No fertilizer, no seaweed, and then we'll see what the spikes do next year. If it's gonna give me blooms or continue to be distorted like the weirdness that was going on and Rainbow Forest, also doing quite well here now. Still enjoying a lot of shade, getting late afternoon sun as the sun is now rising above the hedge. So bit by bit with all those freckles, whoop, we've got to watch it. All those freckles, getting enough light and now it's time to move her into the south side, let's say, blooming alley area where she is bright light, but no direct sun. I don't want to burn the leaves, but this is late afternoon sun, so it's okay. And then we can move up here to this area, which is going to be shut down. And everything here is moving to the east side. Well, the rack is moving to the east side and everybody will be rejuggled and reshuffled on a day where I won't be filming, but putting everything into their summer location. Happy days. Oh, look, let me show you. Here, Ampoyathea, Pink Dreamer. Spikes are still doing well. I'm gonna have some hot pink coming soon. This is my next post-it station. <laughs> the next orchid in question, but I'm waiting to see signs of roots. I've got new growth coming on the Peggy Ruth Carpenter, but before I go into the split and divide, I want to see these growths mature a little bit more. And if I tuck her away, then I'll probably forget and get at it too late. Here's the Dendrobium berry odor keikis that are in bloom. And random Dendrobiums and my Holocaust Blossom Kimberlianum, no spikes, just on the root production front, which is okay, doing well. I still keep looking every day. Surely after such a cold January, surely I would get some blooms. We will wait. I don't know. Ciao, Praia. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, facing 
so to speak, the wrong way, but not for me because I normally come up to this area the way we just walked instead of coming in through the dining room area, which is in the back there. So I see her lots and lots. That's why she's facing this way and totally wired to the rack. I don't want this one to drop again. I'll have to find another solution for it when this rack moves to the east side. Beautiful, no fragrance, but absolutely gorgeous. And all these guys will be moving. Look at how well Jumelia is doing. Has absolutely increased in growth over the winter. Hasn't skipped a beat. And look at how that is progressing. Fantastic. This is a really, really pleasant orchid to grow because it's just doing its thing and it's so vigorous and happy. Then I have my Myrmecophilia here, Thomsoniana. That growth is coming along really well as well, producing roots now. And I think I'm going to get a slightly bigger growth this time, judging by where the sheath is. I need to get back to this growth size. This is the biggest bulb I ever grew. Never bloomed for me, but we'll see. This time I'm going to have it on the east side. It's been getting a lot of light back here these past weeks. And then I've got my Epidendrum Stamp Fortianum over here. And those leaves are starting to fade. But there's a little something growing at the base of it. And it could be a spike. It's not to know, it's far too early to tell. That could be a spike. That'd be nice. And that could be another spike there. We shall see. Looking forward to whatever it is, because any new nubbins, any new growth, anything that shows signs of waking up, beautiful time of year. Today we have 20 degrees Celsius in the shade. Perfect. Tonight we're going to have 15 degrees Celsius all night long. Perfect. And that is why one more tour before I switch everything around. Tolumnias were not watered today despite the heat. Tomorrow we'll give them another good drink. Sometimes I'm a little bit reluctant to just keep them wet. It's not quite that time of year yet. You can see I'm still fighting with some of the mineral buildup from when I was too aggressive with my fertilizer. But all in all, they're looking much better. I can see that the leaves are looking a little bit more plumped up and happy to be alive. And then, of course, the blooms. These are not stress blooms, which is a nice thing to see. So I'm going to take you to the others because I have to move my stands, which I want to follow up on as well. There we go, I'm gonna bring you into the shade because the angle of the sun now is reaching into where my stands are still sat on some empty chairs. This is cold damage, so we've lost the leaf there. We're gonna lose this leaf because of cold damage as well. They do not like it as cold as they have to put up with in my winter. And I thought they were doing really well, but now you can see a couple of months after the cold, cold weather, suffering leaves. And that shouldn't be because this is a new leaf. This is sun and old leaf. But this is an old leaf. I would expect that to be dropping shortly. But this is clear signs of cold damage. And the strange thing is, because they do live next to each other, this one doesn't have signs of cold damage. So it all depends on the maturity of the leaves at the time of the growth. So this one fared with the cold temperatures really well. Again, we have sun damage here, but this is an old leaf and it's starting to get absorbed. Same here, very old leaf, cold damage, new leaf, new growth. So my guess is that 
The stages of the leaves at which time they were growing have determined which ones were not able to cope with the low temperatures. Oh well, they are beasts and they have to be dealt with ASAP, not out of the basket, but I need to get them somewhere where I don't have to keep moving them. Yes. So let's move around to here, where I still have some cymbidium blooms, looking gorgeous in the sun. If I'm far enough away, they're looking gorgeous. As we get a little bit closer, you can see some damage of botrytis from all that rain that we had. While these opened, they were just getting totally drenched. And there are some slight signs of botrytis, but that's, you know, it's part and parcel of what this is all about. When you grow outdoors, these things happen. Not that I like it, but look at her, isn't she pretty? Oh, I love it. And the fire spikes are still doing well. Now I'm keeping a very, very close eye on for aphids. I'm not so bothered about the ants. Maybe I should be, because I don't like them being so aggressive with their eggs. I will come out with a paintbrush and take care of that with that, some alcohol straight away. I don't want them to be aggressive with their eggs here because fire's blooms are not as hard as Maxillaria variabilis bloom. So if you see that happening on my Maxillaria variabilis, I'm not bothered. But this is not happening with my fire, so those ants are gonna have to be removed. Let's hope that the blooms themselves did okay throughout the rain. Remains to be seen. Now let's go to the blooming alley and have a look, see what's going on there for now and what's gonna change. This is my community mount. There's Dendrobium aphyllum on this one. There's Ceratolabium. And I have the Cerola on it as well. So let's just mosey around and give everybody another spray. The afternoon is quite warm. Beautiful. Somebody else is enjoying that too. Half in, half out. So yeah, and look at this. My first Cerola bloom of 2021. Let's get that in focus. Pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. This cane is also now far enough out and away from the mount, and I think I'm gonna be able to keep these blooms clean. Was struggling with that last year with smaller canes, but this is looking really, really good. And I have to be careful because I've got buds going on at the aphyllum, and I don't wanna be popping them off accidentally, which it's gonna probably be some accidents are gonna happen because they're so close to each other, but I have to be as careful as possible. But there she is, beautiful, Cerula. Sorry, Ceraula. Yeah, I love it. Okay, and we have Gardner going on in the background. I hope I can edit that out. If not, I apologize. But I've got my leopard yawn up here. The two spikes are coming along quite well. There were four, but two have been compromised due to the weather. I still have these two left, and I'm happy for any blooms this one gives me. And then up here on the row, all the dendrobiums, they are doing really well. I'm waiting for my Senua to wake up and grow roots. It needs to be addressed. Exili is now starting to extend. My polyanthem here is still, well, it's not sleeping, but it's now dropping leaves more quickly. So there's still some things going on with that one with regards to thinking it's winter. Victoria Regina is just cranking. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I may not get any blooms out of her this year, but with the, all these canes, there is certainly great potential for next year. And then here is a, piece of a unicorn, unicum, 
Sorry, not unicorn. <laughs> but look, surprise, spikes. Beautiful orange blooms coming up. My anosmum hasn't woken up yet. My other unicorn piece has woken up, so there's one growth on its way. And my Eonopsis popcorn hururi here is going to be quite a spectacle if all the growths that are coming out of it are going to produce a spike. Very pleased with this orchid, very pleased with the result of the mount and that hob material. Okay, so the status here at the moment is just intermediate because some of these will go on the east side, some of these will go on the shelf behind me. So everybody here is just waiting for that one shelf to move to the east side and then be reshuffled into their summer positions. And with the exception of Dendrobium tortile, because look, she is in her pot, she has her forever space and all those buds are, oof, it's going to be a good one. So pleased I'm getting some blooms despite the maltreatment of last year. And then I wanted to show you something about my other loose neary piece, which is potted up. Same thing with the funky distorted spikes. Let me see if I can get in there properly. So spike grew to here and started its weird curly whirly thing. And then you just kind of wait. I only had one bloom. Normally it aborts and does what the other one did that we saw that is in the hanging basket. But look what it's doing now. It is extended and there's more blooms coming. So is this a sign that it is growing out of whatever problem or issue it had and came with? Or is it a sign it's getting more moisture because it's potted up in Lekka and self-watering? Yes. We will only know in 12 months time when the other one starts to produce spikes again. But this is great news. I'm really happy to see this. I don't want it to be a continued issue because this blue variety is beautiful and it's highly, highly fragrant. And you can see the tip is still doing weird stuff. Very strange. So we'll keep that under observation. I just wanted you to know that it is extending. I'm also being very careful because I have Le Deux, Propiculus Lelius still here in bloom. This is Ensfeldsii. Ah, oh, come on. Very, very hard now with the light. Yellow blooms anyway. And my Harpophila. So cute. I am so in love with that little lip there. That little frilly, like white lace, little margin. I have a creepy, creepy affection for this orchid. And this one is growing on me simply because of its size of its spike. <laughs> Tiny orchid, big spike. Love it. And here's my Maasai Red. Dropping blooms, opening blooms. Impressive. Just impressive. And it doesn't live there all year round. That would make it too cumbersome for me to be able to handle. But we're going to have to tweak some things because down here are now the big guns in big pots. Now, some of them will go on the east side, but not all of them. So normally Maasai Red occupies this corner in the summer. But look at this. These pots are getting bigger and bigger. We've just done the Guatemalensis. Oof. But look at this. Maxima. That's four buds right there. And four buds right there. And this sheath is chubby as well. Bit of a straggler, but it's chubby. And the thing with this one is she is not rooted in after I did the cleanup and the repot. Not rooted in, so that's concerning. Uh, watching closely, yeah. I'm watching closely, but I, I can't. I cannot have or see these blooms. So that massive report did actually no harm to the blooming of what was in the sheaths. 
or what was going to come to, into the sheaths. We're going to have blooms anyway. Oh, I'm so excited about this. <laughs> Here is the Digbianum that I have on this shelf for the time being to get accustomed to high light again. Despite purple lights over the winter, the sun is a completely different ball game. So right now I have the afternoon, late afternoon sun hitting this orchid. If it were on the top shelf, it would be getting a lot of sun all day long. And I'm still a bit concerned about how much direct sun to give it. If I feel the leaves are getting hot, and they were while it was on the top shelf, then the orchid has to come down. That's too much. Same with the Dawiana was on the top shelf. I had to bring her down. That gorgeous leaf there was getting a bit too hot. So it's still a shuffle, a daily shuffle, a daily walk, a daily touch and feel, assessing what the leaves are doing at what point in time. But it is so much fun because I'm in a t-shirt. Oh. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm in a t-shirt. I'm happy. All right. So top shelf, just, you know, I'm not going to see much up here because when we do the East tour for the first time, most of these orchids up here will all go to the East side. These are my top guns, all the perparatas and the mailman. And I've got, um, what's I'm going to call it? Golden cellar up here somewhere as well. And then this is my Colostylis or steady eye. And look at how much of the new growth is coming here. It is popping out. I want to move this orchid, even though there are no roots growing. It is now established after one year. The roots usually come in August, but because of this climbing and rambling habit of this orchid, a round pot is just dumb because look at that growth over there. It's already up against the pot. So this one's going in a circle pot. It should be simple and straightforward. Touch wood. But we've got the transition process and phase over. I'm not waiting for new roots. It's always bang in the middle of the hottest part of the year. I prefer not to address anything at that point in time. So we're just going to up pot this one and pretend nothing ever happened. Yubiki is OK. Up there now. Lots and lots of light up here can handle the direct sun. So I'm just going to move down because we'll look at the top guns more closely once they've moved. Oh, orange much <laughs> in your face. Hey, look at that. This makes me happy as well as t-shirts and soon flip-flops all day, all night. Fuchs Orange Nugget Dresden, one and two. How pretty, look at this spectacle, look at this. Standing back, a little bit of a panorama shot. I wonder if you've noticed this one. My Kyogoti Happy Field is in bloom again. And I've got my Isemiyaki perfume here. Difficult next to the Zygo. Uh, we've got one bloom looking worse for wear, but the fragrance of the Zygo next to Issey Miyake perfume. Mm -mm. I cannot, I cannot describe the feeling. Epidendrum Capricornu, well, Embre crossed with Capricornu. The cutest little blooms. And I must say they're pretty, pretty long lasting. So can I get you to focus? Oh dear, I've got sun in my eyes. <laughs> Look at them. They're getting quite cute. They've started out a bit pale, and now they've got more orange and the stem is more pink. I love these little blooms. But look at this panorama. Panorama of my blooming alley. Everybody is screaming for attention. And I am so happy to give it to everyone. Golden Peacock. Berry Oda. Step back a bit further. Check this out if we can against the light. I know it looks a bit darker than it really is. But if you, <laughs> a little bit of imagination maybe. This is impressive. Oh my goodness. And I wanted to also show you the 
Caudatum. Oh, I keep forgetting this name. Bicornutum. Yeah, Caularthron. There you go. Not Caudatum. Uh, Caularthron Bicornutum from the Orchid Room. This spike has been going all winter. It's making me nervous. If this is how long a spike takes to develop on this orchid, it's going to be one of those make, him, make me nervous kind of orchids like my Ensfeldsii that was developing throughout the winter as well. And then come certain times of year, I was starting to shuffle orchids. Oh my goodness, the stress. Oh, so yeah, Calrathrum baikonutum. I really would like to see the blooms on this one. It's very, very special, very special gift. All right, up here we've kind of looked at stuff. Uh, we've got some root growth here on my magic wand. Very happy about that because that was cleaned up last year as well. And now we're filling the pot with proper roots, which is great. And everybody is just, yeah, spring guys, it's springtime. And you go down here. This is where my Encyclia Garciana lives now. I'm going to be training the growths but I'm giving her more shade than she's normally accustomed to because of recovery time is all I can say. Oh, and she smells so good as well. That fancy talcum powder. Mm. When, when I'm down here, I can smell her. When I'm up there, I've got Happy Field competing with Berry Oda competing with Zygo. Champagne problems for an orchid grower in spring. So Lelia Flava is pot bound again after the repot in the later part of last year. Very happy, great new growth down there. We don't quite have the height, but we are fat and chubby, which is good. And here is my Renanthera Citrina. And now the spike is starting to push much, much faster. Started in the winter and now it's coming. Awesome. And check this out. Just a little side note. Look at my air plant there. That big chunky thing in the background. I've got the two little wispy ones. It's going to bloom. Look at that. First time bloomer. <laughs> oh yeah, and I have Leopoldii down here, the seedling now. So I can train that growth to move up and towards the light. Beautiful, stonking new growth there. For Leopoldii in my collection, much appreciated. Yeah, so I do have to do some shuffling with the air plants as well. They live down in that corner. So bit by bit, I'm gonna have to move everything away. <clears throat> I have to move <clears throat> Masai Red away. I need to get at that wall back there for the Tolumnias. I'm gonna have to move Portilla away and watch those spikes and buds. Woo, I'm going to be busy and I'm going to time it at such a point when there's a lot, a lot of noise and I don't get freaked out that I can't film because everybody is yapping away in and around me, except me. This air plant here that I don't know, it looks like a big grass, has also been blooming for a long time. But they always look a bit scruffy after a while. Still have blooms coming though, so not doing anything about this spike just at the moment. But this one down here, I'm, I'm excited. That is, yeah, I'm happy about that one. Enormous thing. They've grown really well, these air plants, in the last two years. Righty ho. <laughs> Ta-da, one more time. This makes me so happy. These blooms are beautiful. This is a a cross between the Arantiaca and the Aromaticum. And boy, if it's the Aromaticum that gives it its fragrance, I might need to get me the Aromaticum species. Happy field, who'd have thought? Okay, so um, yeah, I think this is gonna be it for my tour. Oh, one more thing. Look, my Nobly commercial hybrid is coming into bloom. That'll be another fragrant one. <laughs> Not only that, it's also coming into growth. There's a new growth coming right there, which is good from the base. No cakeys. That's what I'm looking for. 
Got the blooms. Fantastic fragrance on that one. But yeah, I think I'm going to call it a day. Thank you everybody so very, very much for tuning in, having a look-see at my current setup, which will be history, probably as from tomorrow, and then we can have another walkabout. If you enjoy walkabouts, or if you just enjoy blooms, you let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, thank you. I really appreciate the company. Spring has arrived in a Spain. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Please take care and be safe. Bye.